you know a few years ago that uh, movie came out, The Secret? Yes. So that's all untrue, I guess, huh? <laughs> well, I would say that that any any movie or any witness that that uh, has as its basis the power of the mind and the power of thought has value because it, this is a journey inward and uh, the Holy Spirit knows that we we have to use the symbols, the symbols of the world have to be used as part of a mind training authentically to to regain or re when I say remember or recognize the power of the mind. So when the movie The Secret came out, I remember uh, doing a gathering in Pennsylvania and uh, we showed that movie and and then it was, I, I said it was like a great launching pad uh, into going into a deeper uh, discussion because basically the mind is very powerful and, and part of the mesmerism of this world has been to to forget the mind, to become mindless. Uh, and what does that even mean, mindless? Well, all the focus on the body and the brain and neurology and neurotransmitters and peptides, even in some of our best quantum physics movies, uh, like What the Bleep Do We Know and things like that. You hear Candace Pert and a lot of the scientists talking about uh, like brain waves, like Neuro neurological movements as associated with the mind, as if the brain and the mind are the same. And they aren't. They're far from it. Um, but you can see those are steps into opening to an awareness of the mind and, and to the power of the mind. So certainly uh, the movie The Secret was, one of its central themes was on manifesting. What I was saying yesterday with this idea of, of no manifesting is that the deeper you go into the experience of the integration, of the wholeness, of the unification, the even the duality of, of thought and world, manifested world, that seems to be actually, a, a, to the human being it seems to be just the way things are. That there are physical, there's a physical world that seems to be outside. And then there's a mental world that seems to be inside. And what Jesus does is he takes his course and he just starts working with his workbook lessons. You know, my thoughts are images that I have made. My meaningless thoughts are showing me a meaningless world. He starts off you know, there's a method. He starts off with lesson number one, nothing I see means anything. Really what he's saying is nothing I perceive means anything. I have given everything I see all the meaning it has for me. And it's not until, those are the first two lessons, they're very much about perception. He's talking about the perceived world. Then in um, Lesson number four, already just four lessons into his mind training program, he comes in with his first thought lesson. These thoughts do not mean anything. Then he kicks it back into perception again for five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then he comes back again with number ten. My thoughts do not mean anything. What he's doing through his mind training workbook is he's, he's guiding the mind into an experience to show the mind that the thoughts that it thinks it thinks and the world that it thinks it sees are actually the same. That he's aiming at a unification of awareness where you start to realize in one instant, one glorious instant, that there is no world outside the mind. In fact, he says it in the workbook in many different ways, you know, it's kind of like, did you get it? Did you get it? Did you get it? You know, it's like kind of, did you get it yet? Uh, there's even one point where he says that this world is a world of ideas. And he really means it. It's all ideas. It's all equally ideas. 
It's not that we have some ideas that are mental and some that are physical, some that are manifestations. You know, when you hear Wayne Dyer or Deepak get together and talk about manifesting, you know, manifest what you want, or, or in the secret, you know, manifest everything. The underlying assumption in the whole topic of manifesting is bringing form, bringing from thought into form, you know. Or when you hear stories about, let's say, somebody from India like uh, Sai Baba, you know, manifesting bracelets, you know, manifesting jewelry. You see, from thought into form. And what I'm teaching is, when you go for enlightenment and self-realization, the whole point of all this mind training is to see that there is no distinction. That everything is consciousness, and only consciousness. That, that this is a world of ideas. And more than that, that this is a world of ideas and that all of these ideas that make up the world are equally false. All of them. There are none that are more true than any of the other ones. That's a really high goal, but that's exactly where this is leading. So that's what I was talking about, uh, that there really is no manifesting. That's, that's you know, when you move into self-realization or enlightenment, you see that the whole, the whole idea, the whole concept of manifesting just evaporates like a cloud that, that just evaporates, or a puddle of water that evaporates. Some of you might have seen the movie, uh, What the Bleep Did We Know? And then they did a sequel uh, called uh, Down the Rabbit Hole. You might have seen that one, it's a beautiful, two beautiful quantum physics movies. And there's one physicist in there who is talking about assumptions and, and He's saying that when you start to reach a point of connectivity, where you, where you realize the quantum field, the unified quantum field, that certain questions uh, just completely dissolve and seem to be utterly ridiculous. They don't seem to be meaningful questions. I think, I can't remember, I think he's, he uses the example of like the, the marital status of Number five. Number five. He talks about and down the rabbit hole. He said that the questions become as meaningless as, as what is the marital status of the, of the number five. You know, and and imagine those problems and issues in your life that seem to be so reoccurring and and so difficult and so challenging that from the higher perspective we'll call it unification that these questions that seem so troubling are, are about as ridiculous as what is the marital status of the number five. <laughs> it's really great when you can start to open your mind to, to seeing that, instead of being so troubled 